Tervepä terve, that is welcome to Raudos, where's the best of defunct bands. This time it's all about Sentenced, this Finnish legendary band that ceased to exist more than 15 years ago. To be honest, I am not exactly sure how I ended up picking this band. Maybe someone reminded me of this, because what I like to do with worst to best videos is to band discographies which are already defunct, so that they don't know make more albums and mess with the order. Uh, also, there is a reason uh, for this video, particularly because I read the band uh, biography a couple of years ago. Kind of a tragic story, really, if you get to it. I'll get that into a bit. Um, but yeah, it's a band that had a big influence in uh, so many ways, much like so many other older bands. Uh, Sentence never operated in just one uh, single genre, but kind of uh, changed the career, the, the path during the early years and only later on kind of uh, found their own way to do music and as such became an original name in the genre. So um, it's also kind of a hard to define uh, with these kind of bands. I mean, I mean, bands that are constantly doing all the way one and the same style, okay, say Cannibal Corpse, it's easier. You just figure out which kind of a uh, album fits you the best ways and then you just do the order. But when there are bands such as Sentenced, this could be applied to bands such as like Paradise Lost or Enslaved, Dark Throne and Bathory, two of those latter ones which I have already done with the worst of best videos, it gets a little bit complicated. So before I get to the actual order, that is according to me anyways, from worst to best, it might be in place to uh, recap the story quickly before going into the details of the band in terms of which one is the best and which one is the worst. So uh, let's do it. Sentence started already in the late 80s, so it's one of those kind of a pioneer bands for Finnish death metal. As you can he see here, and you most likely already know it, it started as a death metal band. Later on, kind of became a melodic death metal band and even later kind of got defined as a gothic metal. Now this latter part might be debated a little bit, whether it counts as a gothic metal or is it more about just melodic metal. Well, it depends on the person we're talking to. I mean, there are so many ways to kind of see which box this band fits. But Rest assured, I think gothic metal is pretty well, much well defining the band's style, especially when they had this kind of a tragic output with the lyrics dealing with death, depression, suicide, and there are other topics as well. But you know, lots of these songs um, are dealing with death and the darker aspects of life. Um, I would go even as far as to compare these to Paradise Lost in so many ways meaning they both have this kind of a melancholia later years, defining their style musically and lyrically. Not that I'm very too well versed with the uh, sentenced lyrics later on. And uh, th this is also a reason why I wanted to do this kind of intro to this, because sentenced kind of a played an important part for me in my late teen years, but later on I kind of lost the touch with the band because of, you know, various reasons. For example, my personal music taste going for darker and more extreme styles were ascendance changed from their death metal to, say, more of this gothic direction. So uh, when I was going through the uh, band's discography, it was an interesting journey because like half of these albums, I never even listened to this before doing this discography. So I went the whole discography through twice, making notes notes along the way and figuring out which just clicks me, clicks with me the most and all that stuff. So one might say, yeah, it's not fair if you don't know it all the way through throughout the years. Well, that might be true, but hey, nobody has the time, nobody has the dedication to listen to all the bands throughout the years in equal measures. Sometimes you just listen some albums more and some albums less for rather obvious reason. Anyway, it was kind of an enlightening journey to listen to this whole discography a couple of times because 
I found some new, really cool songs, but also I learned an important part of the whole story here, like, because if I hadn't been listening to some of these albums previously, or heard only a few songs here and there, it was kind of an enlightening look. Okay, so this is what the guys were actually doing, because, I mean, obviously, as a Finnish person, uh, you can't really miss Sentenced, you know, as a band, you know. Even though you might not be a fan of it, the style, but it's it's hard to miss it because they were relatively big. And obviously they had their own story. And now that I read the uh, biography a couple of years ago, well, obviously you get a little bit of an inside what's going on. No, enough rant, enough uh, introduction to this band. Let's just say it started as a dead metal band with a couple of first albums. And then it started to change with Amok, with the kind of a melodic death metal. And that was a kind of a transition phase. Especially in hindsight, it's easier to see how the band started to change throughout the years. And when the band started to progress with Down, Frozen and so forth, things really started to uh, get a new form. Much like Amorphis started as a death metal band and a couple of albums later it was quite a different band. So these two definitely have something in common, even though Sentence is definitely darker and more melancholic in nature, but having both uh, their roots in Finnish death metal history and being important parts of that, uh, well, they have the kind of similar similarities right there. Anyway, uh, so the band was there for more than a quarter of a decade, 26 years roughly, give or take, and that was an interesting journey all the way. Now, before I get to my personal order, worst to best, it's worth taking a look here how the uh, last lineup was. Because, well, there is this tragic part, like I said. Now, Mika Tengula, rest, him, rest in peace, uh, died in 2009, and, um, well, he was kind of a tragic figure. He was this gear player, the uh, songwriter, and all that stuff, you know, the key element to the band. I mean, without him, the whole band would have ceased to exist. But he died, like, four years later than the band, so it wasn't like the band died because of, you know, him dying. Uh, but I guess these two have some kind of a correlation because what if the band had kept going? Would Tenkula be still alive? Would he had, you know, taken better care of his hair or not? It's hard to say really. I mean, he was only one year older than me. Died in the age of 34, so quite young. Um, anyway, it's hard to say and nobody is not gonna say it's like, the band's for or anything because like I said it's heart disease and blah 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 so this thing could have happened with or without the band hard to tell but obviously the band life takes its toll and especially if you uh, end a career with such band you might evolve something you know like I don't know unhealthier ways to uh, kill your time when you don't have this band to stay focused on all that stuff. But I don't want to speculate. I might be totally wrong, so don't shoot me for my rambling here. I'm merely merely saying that these kind of a things happen. And sometimes they are related to the band carriers. I mean, rest in peace, Alex Laiho and uh, Lars Jöran Petro. And I'm kind of, I hate to say that, but it seems like all the bands which I do here with, you know, worst to best, which are defunct, they all seem to have a death involved. I mean, battery, death, uh, you know, death, death. And all these things are important part. So it's kind of a sucks. Also, Necrophagia, which I did recently, ended up with death. Anyway, so this is a tragic story. Also, what makes an interesting part of the uh, whole deal here is that the chains of vocalist around 1995-1996 when Ville Laihela came to replace Taneli Arva, the original vocalist of the band, and as such, well, there was this kind of a change in a ways. But anyway, let's start doing the order, because I could ramble all the way down and nobody would want to watch it. So, because of the style changed from after a couple of albums and even more after that, uh, it's hard to make this order. And I know that not many people are going to agree with me and that's totally fine, by the way. I'm just giving this <laughs> kind of a hint here because, you know, some people are going to do a little bit different praising and different uh, dissing of these albums versus me. But let's take a quick look at here. You know, 
If we take at the first albums, Shadows of the Past, Not From Here, more than 88% in you know review score on average, which is a huge thing. Also, I'm like 87, down 86, and then it starts on decline, even though the gold white light kind of jumps up. And the funeral album, 45, people really seem to disrespect or even hate it. Um, my order is quite different, and I'll explain why along the way. But if I had to pick my worst, like worst of sentence, like my least favorite of the band, that would be actually down in 1996. Now, in hindsight, this is an album that seems like it was hurried, maybe with the chains of vocalists, I don't know, but also because there were a couple of earlier albums, I mean album and an MCD before that. So it, the band was really, really active and pushing new releases all the way. And it, to me, it seems like Down is uh, hurriedly made. That is, after Amok, the band was like changing once again the style a little bit. And then we had, then they had to have this new vocalist to be, you know, warmed up for the band. And clearly, Lahiala wasn't in the be at the best of his game with this album, because to me, it seems like he only later on uh, kind of evolved a lot as a vocalist. And this is almost on the level of cringe at some points, because it's clear that Laihiala is, you know, uh, trying to figure out which way to sing. It's kind of a raspy, yeah, let's lose news, yeah, woo, yeah, that kind of stuff. So it's not like you're clear singing, but it's not like rolling. It's this kind of a grunting in the in the between zone. Some people are totally fine. I mean, of course, uh, there are good moments on this album, but for me, it feels kind of a lukewarm. There is only like one, in my opinion, one good song, and the rest are more so-so. It's not a bad album, but it's an album that when I went through twice, I was like, ah, this is kind of a tedious task to do. Uh, because I felt like it really feels more filler than killer. And uh, to me, it seems like this is the low point the band reached in 1996. Now, obviously, the band had three different albums prior to this one, so it's not easy to change and take a new vocalist, which, in my opinion, explains a lot. Might not be the real reason, but it totally feels like that, like more than 20 years later. So for me, uh, Down is the weak, poem and, uh, weak point of the band. But it's not useless, it's just, you know, hard to get into. Uh, if I had to pick a song you would like to start this one, it would be News, the hit song that was played on radio. So it's clear, clear the reason is clear why it's as track number two basically the first track right after intro because it's the one that invites you in the downside is everything after that feels kind of a crappy compared to that news is the crown jewel on this album and it's too bad none of the other songs are even, not even close to it but what happened after that which way to go with sentence discography is this the one is the worst now i would go all the way to 2005, nine years later, when was the time for the last album? This, in, in my opinion, the second worst in the discography. So here I'm kind of agreeing with the people on average score here. I wouldn't say it's that bad, really. This is a little bit better than that. Well, quite a bit, in, in fact, but it's still not very good an album. Now, the funny thing is, this starts nicely. May today become today. Uh, it's actually quite groovy song. It starts, you know, uh, quite powerful riffing and all that stuff at the first, and you're like, yeah, this could be going. Then it becomes one of the best songs of the band's whole discography ever first. Really catchy, and it, in, in my opinion, quite quite a beautiful song, in fact. Something that really strikes like, yeah, no, it's rocking on, it's cool. Um, and even this album continues with the style and by the way this is very much the same style the kind of gothic metal if you will than what down started in, in 1996 but then it's kind of starts decline like it starts to feel like the rest is just more or less uh kind of a filler not killer material once again curious enough there is this track number five which doesn't fit here but it's it kind of uh 
you know, has its reasoning by the way it is there. It's an instrumental track that lasts less than a minute, and it's old school death metal riffing. It's much like the band is not into their past, like their first album, and so with this kind of a uh, Swedish death metal sounding song, which actually has a couple of good riffs, but it's there to just to act like an interlude and to kind of a conclude the whole career. We started with death metal, we are ending with death metal. And after that becomes the big line part of the album, which is kind of a lukewarm all the way down. This could be, in my opinion, very really well, the worst album uh, by the band. But like I said, there are these couple of songs, in my opinion, kind of a save it. And also because Light Hell is way better vocalist with this one than what he was in, in Down. You can pretty much see, the, or rather hear, the contrast between these two. Uh, so it's not a bad album, but it's kind of a lukewarm. I have a hard time really enjoying it. But Everfrost, in my opinion, is still one of the better tracks of Sentenced All Times. And now we get the part where I have this unpopular opinion. Because, in my opinion, it would be actually not from here. That is, third worst by the band. And this is shocking because a lot of people consider not from here as the best, the most defining album of sentenced. Now this is death metal. Obviously, it has it doesn't have much to do with later albums. Anyway, anything basically after down or starting with down. Uh, but what happened here, in my opinion, is that this almost 45 minutes of an album is playing death metal in kind of a technical way. It's clear that the band members can, uh, you know, play well and all that stuff. These compositions, most of the time, don't make that much of a sense, in my opinion. It's more about finding a cool uh, riff here and there, but mostly it's not that great. I mean, the composition is kind of a messy, it's chaotic, so it definitely requires the listener to have this kind of acquired taste for this particular type of death metal, which is not exactly technical, it's kind of a progressive, but not too progressive. One could even say it's sentenced, uh, answer to what death had going on since, I don't know, human spiritual healing and all that stuff. So it's quite different compared to their early works, but it's still definitely death metal. And that is the reason why I don't get my kicks out of it. It's not that bad, but I never, never were able to like it. And I got to hear Sentenced around 1994. So this was quite fresh back in the days, but not the latest release. That was actually the Trooper EP, which totally, you know, got me to dig Sentenced and later on Amok. But not from here. Didn't click with me in 1994. It doesn't click with me in 2021. And, and I tried. So if I had to pick one song to kind of give you the idea of the album and still being one of the best tracks, or maybe the best track of the album, I would say go with the epic, the ending track. Uh, there are no absolute favorites for me, but epic could be very well the track that could do that role. So, back to the um, sentence discography in terms of the midway. I would say that would be Frozen in 1998. This is very much... Um, Continuing where Down left off a couple of years earlier, but it's more polished, more, well, better songwriting overall, but it's not like um, the difference is very, very big. In my opinion, this is just the better version of what Down was. Let's put it this way. If Down was a demo, this would be the album. But... This is one of the tricky ones in terms uh, comparing to uh, Down in that sense that this doesn't have, in my opinion, the kind of a clear hit material song. So this is more like consistent in style and quality versus Down, but lacking songs like uh, News on Down. And as such, it's kind of a hard to compare these together. But still, I would say overall, this is somewhat better, more like enjoyable because it's more consistent in quality and we're much more balanced. If I had to pick a song, which is here, I would say The Rain Comes Falling Down. It's actually a quite beautiful song and it doesn't really feel like it's six minutes of a drag, but more like, yeah, the band is here nailing with the column of melancholia. Dead Leaves is also pretty cool, but overall, this isn't a uh, album which is, you know, doing with its hit songs. 
quite nice an album, but still a little bit like just okay in so many ways. Now the uh, clear continuation from that is obviously Crimson. Once again, two years later, which in my opinion pretty much does the same for Frozen and what Frozen did for Down. That is once again progressing a little bit and uh, improving their overall feeling, but not taking big steps. It's more about honing the receipt, polishing a little bit here and there, and just making the overall a little bit better. Also, what helps is that now you have a hit song, or maybe two. Fragile is pr pretty good, but it's Killing Me, Killing You, uh, which is the song. Dead Moon Rising is pretty okay too, but Killing Me, Killing You, as uh, kind of a cliche kind of a thing it might feel nowadays and to be honest I, I can't get over it but it really reminds me of him just heavier version of him like less of a killing me or a killing me killing you if you get the idea so once again it is doing the same thing overall all over again in terms of songwriting and all that stuff but what matters is that Lai Hiala here is once again uh, becoming a better and better singer adding more on the cleaner side and becoming this real singer, if you will. And that is why I would say Crimson is better than Frozen, which is better than Down. But these are very much like three brothers from the same family. So I would say if you like one, you're going to like them all. Then again, it also goes vice versa. If you don't like none of these, for me, it's hard to understand why would you like some other of those. Anyway, Pretty okay an album and clearly going to better direction with that. Now we don't have many albums left. We have The Cold White Light from 2002, we have Amok from 1995 and we have Shadows of the Past from 1991. Which way would it go? Considering that I'm a death metal fan it comes kind of surprising that I would pick Shadows of the Past here as the third spot, that is the third best spot for the band. Now, uh, this is not exactly the best of Finnish death metal out there, but it's very consistent in quality, being old school death metal. I would go as far as to say Shadows of the Past is sentenced version of what Dark Throne did with their debut album, Soul Side Journey. These are very much kind of a Nordic death metal albums, which clearly had, you know, inspiration coming from other, other bands, uh, which already had established them as death metal, be it American style or Swedish style or whatever. But, you know, not exactly the pioneers in terms like we were already in the 90s, not late 80s. So already those few years before these uh, bands or release dates made sure that these were not exactly the first wave bands. I mean... Technically speaking, nowadays we could say, yeah, late 80s, like mid 80s to early 90s, pretty much the same same thing going on, but there is a still a big difference whether we're talking about 1987, for example, and 1991. I mean, though the gap of years means that there's so much happening. Anyway, my point here is, Shadows of the Past is pretty cool, uh, old school death metal album, but it's not really the best of the best not for me anyway i mean i'm more into uh american type of death metal especially the florida type beat death beat obituary d side cannibal corpse and the whatever and also the swedish death metal was already pretty strong so comparing uh shadows of the past to those bigger names already back then well it doesn't really give a sentence the chance to win the gold medal in this death metal olympics Anyway, be it as may, it's still a very, very decent album. And if I had to pick a song, it would be Disengagement. Not that there is a huge gap in difference in quality with the uh, with the songs here. Anyway, definitely worth taking a look in case you missed some Finnish death metal classics. And now it becomes tricky for me personally, because like I said, when I was listening to Sendenced, it was roughly 1994, 1996, and that is the era where came album called Amok, but also Trooper 1994 and Love and Death in 1995. I was actually coming from my military service when I picked Love and Death. But like I said, these were the best discographies. I'm focusing on albums, and as such, I'm gonna just disqualify the Trooper, which might be the best sentence released, by the way. 
and Lava Death, which is pretty cool, MCD also. But to pick Amok, which might have, in my case, a layer of nostalgia or the cold white light, that's a tricky question because, on the other hand, I would favor the one that takes me back to my teenage years, Jerry being 19 or so, or the cold white light, which doesn't have this nostalgia layer at all, which is purely uh, talking to me because of its songwriting. Now, if I had to pick the win winner here, I would say it's not a mock. And maybe it's because of this nostalgia factor. I am not exactly the type who falls for nostalgia. So uh, maybe that's kind of a mood point even to mention. But here it is, the position number two for best slot in sentence discography goes to a mock. Now it was fun when I was listening to this for the first time in more than 25 years. Uh, it was because I was at the gym and when the first track started with the intro and I was like, this takes me back all the way to the 1990s. I haven't had this on CD for many, 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 many years. I don't even know when I probably traded it away. But, you know, when I started playing it and I was at the gym and I was like, you know, it feels so different being listening to this over 40s than being less than 20s. And man, I was listening to Amok a lot back in the days. Uh, saw them, you know, play live. I, I remember actually meeting the band guys in roughly 1994 or 1995. I'm not sure. Anyway, it was roughly around the uh, era when Amok came. And I remember liking it a lot. I mean, this is an album that doesn't really have, you know, weak tracks. Even though it could be argued there are a couple of weaker ones like Moon Magic or the outro track, which is instrumental. But for me, I think the tracks that really nailed it was, well, the opening track, track The War Ain't Over, Phoenix, very catchy track, New Age Messiah also, and of course Nepenthe, which I guess would be the song to listen to this album if you haven't heard it before. It's, it's basically the album's hit song in a way. And this is also an album which actually introduced female vocals. I mean, they're session only, but they're still, you know, to add the layer. What's also something that I forgot to mention is that the band started incorporating uh, keyboard parts along the way. Certainly they were not dominating in, in throughout the years or era, but they started slowly being introduced to the band, as also as, the, you know, female vocals. And Amok is so much kind of a divider here, because, I mean, this is an album that doesn't really sound like death metal but it's also not with the gothic metal phase which later on happened so when this was mentioned here like on metal archives like melodic death metal in the mid i would say it re totally refers mostly to amok also the vocals here or not from here also and, and amok are like they're not exactly growling anymore like the ways that were shadows of the past were more like towards this kind of a raspier, a little bit grunting style. So it's not exactly heavy metal vocals. It's not like Lenny of Motorhead, but there's this transition going from the growler to raspier, sometimes even kind of a black metal-ish, especially in North From Here, which is like a little bit weird in that sense. But Amok was the last album which featured Daniel Arva's signature style on vocals, and he does tremendous, really, really good job. Uh, with that, and he had already this this new style, if you will. So Amok is, in my opinion, pretty good an album, and it's definitely one of the better ones from this style ever. But somehow I I got kind of bored over the years, and that's why I decided to let it go. Can't remember exactly when or for the reasons, but now that I was listening to it a couple of times. I felt I did the right decision. This is something that I have mentioned with some of my challenging the classic videos and also some of my worst best videos. Sometimes I just have to release an album from my own collection because it doesn't speak to me in such strong ways anymore. Anyway, the last and definitely not the least is Cold White Light, which was in fact something that I had never ever listened to previously until I did this discography run a couple of times. Now, why would I pick this one? It's an interesting thing because basically, once again, this is 
uh, doing the same style which started with down, you know, down and frozen and crimson and so forth. But this is the album that, in my opinion, uh, got the peak point of the band. Once again, pretty much the same style, but the songwriting is the best that Sentenced ever managed to do. Uh, it's incorporating both the hit songs, things like, you know, Excuse Me While I Kill, Kill Myself or Blood and Tears, even Guilt and Regret. But it's also having the strong feeling of melancholia. And as such, doing uh, what Sentence, you know, is known for, having their own style, this very, very finished mindset. You know, kind of dark, kind of a smirk on its face, being melancholic, and at the same time, kind of a groovy and rock and rollist. One could even say songs like Excuse My Well, I Kill Myself, which is kind of a stupid title, uh, has this Finnish Schlager uh, rock feeling. You know, Schlager music, I guess, would be the correct way to say it. So there's definitely kind of a Finnish mentality a lot present here. This should have been the swan song of the band, the funeral album, if you will, because this would have been the way to go, in my opinion. But anyway, be that as it may, uh, I find this album the most enjoyable of all sentenced uh, discography. And I think this is something that people should be listening to if they want to take a good dose of Finnish melancholia in the form of metal music. And the track, you heard it, it is. Excuse me while I kill myself. Now, I cannot say but to sense there's certain kind of irony because it's the kind of a hit song but you can't really be a hit song with a such title. Um, but anyway, it's a, it's a good song. It's kind of a hilarious song. And it's one of those peak moments with Everfrost, in my opinion, how Sendence were doing their best songs. And all these later albums especially have a very good production. So it's not like there's nothing to be ashamed of in, in terms of that. Then again, none of these albums really have weak production. And on this album, Lai Hiala is doing some of his best vocal works also. So this is the kind of a legacy album, if you will. I mean, if a band wants to leave a legacy to be known for, I would say this is the album. One could even go as far as to say this is Sentenced Black Album in terms of Metallica reference. Anyway, this is just my opinion. You obviously have yours. And I'm actually keen to hear your opinion, which is... What is your sentence worst to best? Like I said, I think many people are going to say it's not from here being the best. And I can only I can only wonder what is the worst. I guess many people, it is indeed the funeral album. But if you have an order in your mind, if you have gone to the discography, please let me know. And last but not least, two things actually. If you like these kind of videos, subscribe to the channel and turn those notifications on. If you do uh, like challenging the classic videos and these kind of worst to best videos remember to leave a thumbs up if then again you do not like these kind of uh, worst to best videos leave a thumb down you can vote which way to go i mean these are not mandatory for me to do these are fun to do but kind of tedious at the same time listening to the full discography i like to do them but if you don't want to see them just vote up say yes say nay down. Anyway, thanks for watching this lengthy video. Take care and go listen to some sentenced. It's a band worth listening to. Even though I'm not the biggest fan, I still respect the band's career and their legacy. See you next time with more reviews and discography videos coming your way.